Hello, my name is Thomas Perrin from NTU Singapore, and this is a joint work with Gaëtan Laurent from INRIA in France. Our work is entitled Shawan is a Shambles, and in this work we uh, show the first chosen prefix collision on the Shawan hash function, and we give an application for this uh, by attacking the PGP Web of Trust. And we have a companion website that you can click on on the bottom um, if you want more data, if you want more information about our work. Before I start explaining um, our results, I would like to quickly mention what is a hash function. So a hash function is simply a function that takes arbitrary long input and outputs a fixed size hash value. So typically the uh, hash value will be of n bit where n is equal to 128 bits. That's what the case for MD5 hash function. Otherwise 160 bit is common because it's used in the SHA-1 hash function that we are studying today. And nowadays we want bigger uh, hash output values such as 256 bits. Now, a hash function in cryptography a domain has to follow several security properties, has to ensure some security properties. One of them is uh, being hard to invert, but another one that is pretty hard to achieve in practice is collision resistance. Collision resistance is when you want to ensure that uh, it's hard for an attacker to find a collision. A collision is simply two messages that are distinct, x and x prime, and those two messages through the uh, computation of the hash function will lead to the same value. So that's why you have a collision. Now, what is what we mean by being hard for an attacker is that we want this to be harder, I mean, more complex than two to the n over two operation, where n is the size of the uh, hash value. When you look at how hash functions are built in practice, most of them will follow the construction on two uh, different objects. First one is a compression function that we denote in uh, yellow here, small h. So compression function is exactly the same thing as a hash function. The only difference is that it doesn't take an arbitrary long input, but it just takes a fixed size input. But we want the same kind of property out of it. So we want this to be hard to invert and we want this to be also collision resistant. Now you need to define how you're going to use this compression function in order to build your entire hash function that can handle any kind of input, small or big. And that's the role of the domain extension algorithm, so depicted in, in, in red here. So that's the process, how you're going to use the compression function to output your hash value. One of the most famous domain extension algorithm is called the merkel damgard algorithm. Um, it was introduced independently by Merkel Dem Demgard 30 years ago. It's a pretty simple, it's an iterative process. So you take your message that you want to hash, the message M, and you first pad it so that you can divide it into a certain number of blocks, each block having the same size. So usually, I mean, in the case of SHA-1, uh, the block size is 512 bits. Now you have some internal state that is initialized with a public value called the initialization vector or initialization value. And uh, you use sequentially all your message blocks one at a time through the compression function to update your internal state. The last internal state, once you have processed all the message blocks, is your hash value. Is your hash value. When you look at the situation of Shawan, the security of Shawan looks uh, actually pretty bad. So SHA-1 is a design from the NSA, uh, standardized by the NIST. It's actually just a small update from the SHA-0 uh, hash function that was its predecessor, just a very, very small modification. And actually 10 years after the first introduction of SHA-1 uh, to the public, there was a very like, important breakthrough uh, in the cri cryptography community um, by the publication of the first theoretical collision attack on the full SHA-1 hash function. So this is, was a very important result, but the number of computation that was required to compute this attack was 2 to the 69, which was still uh, a quite big number. It was not considered practical uh, at the time. So there have been a lot, a lot of work on, on, this, uh, on this topic, a lot of people trying to improve, better understand how this attack works. And we had to wait 10 years since uh, we could see the first result on the full compression function. So not the actual hash function, but just the compression function, so the first collision for the compression function of SHA-1, um, and this required 2 to the 57 computation. Two years after came uh, a result that everybody expected, uh, which is the first collision on the full SHA-1 hash function, so not, not the, just a compression function, but the full hash, 
And this uh, required two to 64.7 computation. And this work was introduced by uh, CWI and Google. Um, but this kind of collision that were computed is basically the most, um, I would say, uh, plain one. Uh, it's called the identical prefix collision. I will explain later what this means. And with Gaëtan Laurent, we worked on pushing another kind of collision for uh, SHA-1, which is a chosen prefix collision, which is quite more powerful, but also quite harder to, to, to find for an attacker. So last year, we proposed an attack in 2067, roughly. And in this work that we are presenting, we managed to improve this to 2063.7 computation. We actually managed to compute the, 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 such a collision, and we managed to provide an application by applying it to PGP. So maybe a lot of you would argue that uh, SHA-1 is not used anymore, and uh, everybody knows that SHA-1 is broken. Um, I, I agree that uh, SHA-1 is not used so much now in, uh, in many products, but it's still, unfortunately, still there uh, in some small percentage, but non-negligible percentage. Um, when you catch SHA-1 certificates, uh, it's, it's still present, it still exists. Uh, certificate Authority will still sell a SHA-1 certificate for legacy purposes. Uh, actually, if you look at ICSI Certificate Notary, all the uh, certificate registers, there will be about uh, as of today, 1.3% of, uh, of certificate based on SHA-1, which is like non-negligible. PGP situation is not much better. Um, you still have about 1% of uh, public certification that happened in the web of trust in last year uh, that we're using uh, still SHA-1. But this is just a like, uh, measurable uh, part of uh, the usage of SHA-1. But I expect that uh, a lot of uh, usage of SHA-1 is uh, maybe in shady, like less uh, publicly known protocols. And those protocols will be using SHA-1 and are even less likely to change to something else because they don't have the same pressure uh, in terms of security as um, the other protocol might, might have. So we believe that another push was really needed to accelerate even more the retirement of, of SHA-1. So what is the difference between identical prefix collision and chosen prefix collision? So for that, I need to go and to show you how it works inside the Mercadum Guard domain extension algorithm. So in the case of identical prefix collision attack, there is a prefix P that is chosen by the challenger. So it can be any value, but this prefix P will be the same for both computation of the, of the collision. So we have one chain on top and one chain of bottom that will represent the two values that will happen for the collision. Now the challenger chooses a P, so it can be one, two or several message blocks, but what is important is that they will be the same. So you will have no difference here appearing in the chain. Once you get the challenge, then your goal will be to generate messages, blocks, so M3, M4, etc., and M3 prime, M4 prime, etc. So they will be different. And those blocks will be the one that will create the collision. But the fact that you start with no difference makes it relatively easy for the current knowledge of uh, cryptanalysis that we have to create the collision. So that's the kind of collision that we created by CWI and Google in 2017. This kind of collision is, of course, breaking the, the hash function completely. It breaks the integrity that is provided by the hash function. And you can also create some, um, depending on some application, for example, you can have colliding PDF that you can have by using some tricks about the file format. Uh, so you can have some uh, weird stuff happening. But there's not, it's quite limited what you can do with this kind of collision. If you want something a bit more advanced, a bit more powerful, um, you would have to go for chosen prefix. So the setting is quite similar. The only difference is that this time the challenger does not give you just one prefix P, but two prefixes, P and P prime, and these prefixes will be different. Now this will create a random difference in the chain here between the two, and you would have to then find blocks for the up, upper chain and lower chain, such that you will lead to a collision. And the fact that you have a random differences makes all the previously known cryptanalysis very, very difficult to conduct. This will break certificates. This has been showed with a uh, rogue CA that was applied on the case of MD5 hash function. And also you have other type of attack that you can potentially um, conduct. Now we have three results in this paper. Um, first, we improve the uh, collision attack, even the normal one, even the identical prefix collision attack. We improve by a factor of roughly eight to 10. And we also improve in the same way the chosen prefix collision compared to the previous paper that we published with Gaetan.
That's our first result. The second result is that we actually conducted the, the, the computation. It's a very, very technical attack with many, many details, many different phases that interact with each other. And it's in the end quite costly, even though it's practical. Uh, but we implemented this on GPUs and it required us about two months of computation on a cluster of uh, 900 uh, GPUs. And also what we, our last result is that we wanted to have some kind of application when we conducted the attack and we decided to apply this for the PGP web of trust by providing an impersonation attack. So attack, um, our attack is uh, impacting several uh, protocols. Um, we list all these protocols on our website. Uh, so you can click on, the, on this link if you want to see uh, all the details. And to conclude, of course, uh, don't use SHA-1 if you didn't know it already. Please only use SHA-2 or SHA-3. Uh, those are uh, excellent dash functions for which no attack is known at all uh, up to, uh, as of today. A lot of people ask us about uh, HMAC SHA-1. So our attack does not apply to HMAC SHA-1. So in the case of SHA-1 being used as a MAC, but we'll still advise uh, you to move away from uh, SHA-1 even in your HMAC construction. So SHA-1 has been broken for 15 years now. We believe that it's time to move on and not use a uh, broken hash function anyway. Um, I would like also to comment on security margin. Um, I think SHA-1 is a very typical use um, example of why uh, security, margin, security margin is important in cryptography. Um, we can see that deprecating a cryptography algorithm is very, very complex, extremely long and painful. Even as of today, we still have SHA-1 uh, in the wide for a non-negligible percentage. So don't underestimate the importance of security margin. We don't need something comfortable. We need something that is actually pretty big in order to ensure that this situation will never happen because it's extremely, extremely bad when it does. And maybe the last comment will be um, about what it means to have 64-bit security as of today. It's probably no security at all. Uh, we conducted uh, a computation of 2 to 64 uh, with a reasonable, um, reasonable uh, money, amount of money, about, uh, about a few uh, dozens of, uh, uh, of uh, thousands of uh, US dollars. So it's, uh, you don't have to be the NSA or Google anymore to conduct uh, such a big computation now. Thanks for watching this presentation. And in case you want to contact Gaeta or myself, you have our emails here.